Hi everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Art by Jaeger. My name is Jaeger and I'm a visual artist and today I'm going to be discussing Melty Face, also known as Ego Death. Before we begin, I want to mix things up a little bit and try using tarot cards to kind of guide me in what this image wants to bring to the audience today. So I already shuffled the deck but for Ritual sake, we'll shuffle it real quick again. Reverse cards are permitted in this one. Let's see what the cards have for us today. Okay, I have the Seven of Swords upright, Justice reversed. And the Three of Wands reversed. So I'm going to quickly meditate on the result of these cards and I will get back to you. Well, isn't that interesting? These cards really tell a story. And I'm going to be forthright with you. It's not a pretty picture. It is not what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear today, which is why I absolutely love these cards and appreciate this deck in particular because the imagery just is so striking in it <sighs> kind of like this one here so before i get into the spread i need to give you a bit of a backstory so you have an understanding of what this painting is and what it kind of represents here have a look at it this is melty face also known as ego death it's a painting of a buddy guy who probably uh, really enjoys an IPA while kayaking and camping somewhere around Cultus Lake. Total weekender sort of dude from Vancouver that you would see, right? And um, his face is melting. His face is melting because the sun exploded. And if you've been kind of following what's going on in the spiritual community and even a bit beyond in the alternate scientific scene uh, we are expecting a solar flash the sun is bound to poof do a little micronova at the end of this cycle and um, we're also in the middle of a polar shift the sh shift of the earth's magnetic field it's flipping direction from north to south and these are all things that could be backed up if you do your research and look online for all this information so that said, this would represent the moment that the sun goes poof, micronova, and somebody who is not quite yet ready for it will probably feel kind of like this. But really, the microcosm of it is, this is how I felt at the beginning, towards the beginning of this year, around March and April, when I was painting this. I painted this after I had my Kundalini awakening experience, but before I had my divine feminine reawakened within me as well, which kind of relates as well to what these cards are saying. Now, the cards that I drew, I drew them for the painting, not for myself at this time, but to kind of clarify the journey that this painting represents. And if this painting resonates with you, then maybe these cards have a story for you as well here he's wearing sunglasses the sunglasses here they are a cover that you wear over your eyes the eyes represent pure consciousness so he is clearly covering up his eyes but no cover-up is able to resist a true reckoning and a filling of the light into one's uh, soul and body as in a physical level, a micronova, the sun exploding, would fill the earth with incredible amounts of energy. It will also metaphysically fill the soul with such amount of energy that it will cause the ego to melt away. And if you're not ready for it, the process may be a little bit more difficult than you expected it to. Yet underneath, you have this green ball of light with the energy beams penetrating out of this individual's face, coming out of his nose, his mouth, his ear holes. And this energy is resonating with the energy that's coming in from space right here the green ball inside him kind of resonates with the green green irises within the aurora borealis ah the aurora the timing of this painting was quite incredible cosmically so i finished painting it on the day before we had the solar eclipse happen through the east coast of canada and the united states april the 8th was when that happened i believe and then, a couple of weeks later, we had the most incredible display of Aurora Borealis this century, and possibly the last one too. Aurora that went down all the way to Puerto Rico. How many of you 
excuse me, have ever seen the aurora in your life, let alone that far south. What is that telling you? Well, it tells you the story of that we are in a time of reckoning and that the ego has to melt away and we have to make room for the pure consciousness that is underneath. Because if we don't do it, it's going to hurt a lot more. Why did the Aurora Borealis happen? Why was it so intense? If you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. You know you haven't seen anything like this in your life before. The last time that the Aurora extended all the way down south as far as Puerto Rico, Florida, was in 1857 during an event called the Carrington Event. And if you have not heard of this, in a shell nut, the sun let out a massive solar flare and uh, coronal mass ejection to a level of, of an X30 on the scale that we used to measure these uh, solar weather events. X30 has not happened on the sun since then, yet the effects from a much smaller flare that we experienced, the one that we had was an X3 to X5 scaling, so several times weaker. It pummeled us and our atmosphere reacted as if it was a massive solar explosion that happened, yet it was light. So what happened? Our planet and our solar system is undergoing a magnetic pole reversal as the electric current sheet from the galactic center permeates through our the solar system and flips direction. So with this electric current sheet, our Earth is going to reverse its polarity. The sun always reverses its polarity, but also other planets in the solar system are beginning to undergo a pole shift. There's not just here on Earth, there's on the other planets happening too. Interesting, right? But this is scary too, because our magnetic field before it flips, it weakens. And it has weakened 20 to 30% within the last 20 years alone. Which is why a relatively small explosion from the sun, a relatively small coronal mass ejection and solar flare managed to disrupt our, our atmosphere so heavily because we don't have a protective magnetic shield around our Earth. It's not as strong anymore. All these high energy particles that would have normally been deflected by what is essentially a force field permeated through and channeled into our upper and middle atmosphere, exciting uh, oxygen and nitrogen atoms. And the excitation creates a release of electromagnetic energy we call light looking like this. So, wow. Isn't that interesting? I had the idea of uh, painting the idea of the solar micronova before we saw this uh, incredible Aurora Borealis display this year. I gave most of my ideas. I want to do a shout out to Ben Davidson and his channel, Suspicious Observers, link below, who has done a lot of the scientific groundwork for explaining this theory and how it functions. And that painting represents really Ben Davidson's work on the solar micronova. But beyond that, there's so much more happening here. You have eyes in the clouds that are unconscious. They're asleep. Very much the earth is asleep, but it's starting to wake. You have one, two eyes that are open. And this guy, I guarantee you, his eyes underneath those sunglasses are beginning to open. Or maybe he can't open them. Maybe it's so bright that they're shut completely. But his third eye has begun to open. And it glows the same color as the consciousness ball within his face cavity there. What's left of his uh, melted away ego. And as the light inside brightens, it merges and becomes one of these little orbs coming in from space. One with the universe, with the cosmic energy. And eventually the ego fades away and all you have left is the beautiful light that is within you. But this is not an easy process to undergo as these tarot cards here are going to demonstrate very clearly for us. So let's get into it. What are the cards saying about this painting? Now the cards are relating the story of this painting and what I was going through at the time of painting it. But maybe if this resonates with you, they have a message for you as well. First card that I pulled out was the Seven of Swords held upright. And this is a man in a cloak stealing swords from an encampment. He has four swords under his arm already, and he is taking one, potentially two, three more swords while thinking that he's unseen. But he's not unseen. We see him, right? 
We can see this guy. See what he's doing. This card represents theft, stealth, and being untrustworthy at a time. But what is he stealing? The swords are energy multiplier. He's stealing other people's energy that do not belong to them with the purpose of weakening them almost. Wow, that is a harsh message to receive. And I fully accept it because let me tell you the truth. At the time that I painted this painting and especially a year, a year and a half below that, I was a fucking energy vampire without realizing it. And you may be one too without realizing. Harsh realities here. We are both most likely on the path of service to other self. Our alignment is mostly towards the good, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a shadow side to ourselves. It doesn't mean that we haven't been tempted and acted on the temptation to take something that does not belong to you as well. For me, this game is a very harsh lesson when I lost a really good friend. <sighs> it was tough realizing that I'm not as virtuous as I thought. I was putting up this false facade of being this brilliant spiritual guy who has all his shit together, who's aligned with the light and with justice and honesty. Bull fucking shit on me and bullshit on you. We both have so much work that needs to be done still. And this card right here is a good card reminding us that, you know what? You may be cloaked, but you are seen by the divine. You are seen by yourself. The one infinite creator sees everything. You know how? Because you and I are the one infinite creator. You know what you've done. You do. Don't you? And you can deny it to the public through this fleshy thing we have called the ego. But you cannot deny it to yourself. So take responsibility for being an energy vampire. For hurting the people that you have hurt. It is time to move on from this. But you cannot move on until you internalize the lessons that the Seven of Swords upright has for you. The Seven of Swords is also an air card. And air is the element of the mind, of the mentality, of thinking. There's a lot of thinking that goes on. Thinking that you could get away with this kind of shit. This is the ego's thinking. The ego needs to melt because it thinks that it is unseen. Next card that we have. Justice. Reversed. Also, these two go hand in hand, don't they? Theft and the reverse of justice. The reverse of justice meeting being corruption, bigotry, lying, dishonesty, lack of justice. This is also an air card. For the Seven of Swords... This gives me Gemini energy. Two-faced, right? Gemini could be two-faced. Now, justice. That is a Libra right there. Clear as day. The sign of Libra. The opposite side of Aries, which I happen to be. And justice is represented by the goddess Venus, holding a sword in her right hand and scales in the left. And the scales could be tipped from one side to the other. And right now the scales have been tipped very heavily towards the negative. So it's time to realign the polarity, to change the polarity, change which way the scales are tipping towards the positive. But in the meantime, in the middle, in the fulcrum, that is where the grinding happens. There's a point of pain that you have to work on, cause pain to yourself in order to achieve equilibrium in your own life. Again, because it is reversed, there are aspects of the feminine that are negative as well. The positive aspects being nurturing, compassion, and creativity, but the negative. God, you have manipulation here. So this is again telling me that at the time of this painting, I was a manipulative fuck. I was using not just the mind to steal and cheat. I was using emotions to manipulate the environment around me and people around me to agree with me when I myself on the fundamental level am in disagreement with my actions at the time. Again, this is also an air sign, so it's also mental. It's using a, the mental and the emotional to manipulate 
people to do my own bidding. That sounds very service to solve kind of path stuff right there. And that's dark that the cards would bring this up for us today. Venus, my God, what a beautiful being. It's interesting, looking back to the episode that I did last of Ra. What did Venus represent there? It was a connection. It was its opposite from what I'm seeing here right now in this Justice card. This was my first painting. And this is the beginning of my career as a professional visual artist. So because of this, the third card comes into play, telling me what the blockage was at the time for me to proceed in my life, to proceed forward in the new vision that I have for my life. Third card is the Three of Wands reversed. What is upright? We have a man with three wands planted firmly in the ground, looking at three ships, three potential directions that he could go in his life. And he is rooted and ready to take action. The suit of wands is uh, associated with the element of fire, the action card. And this particular card, the three of wands, I'm getting very strong Aries energy from me, uh, for um, it. Aries being the initiator and the beginner of action and uh, progress. But this guy's upside down. He's Seems like he's ready to take action, but there's a blockage. Something is blocking him. What's blocking him? The previous two cards that we brought up. But more so than that, it's not just uh, any blockage. We have two air cards related to the mental plane. Mind, thinking, overthinking. The blockage that he has is overthinking. He's overthinking his journey and it's preventing him from taking the step because he sees three options. Instead of choosing the closest one and going with it, sticking with it, he's thinking about ways that he could manipulate the situation to work more in his favor. But no, that's not how flow state works. You cannot manipulate the flow. You just begin the flow and the flow takes you. This is the death of your ego is when you are in a flow state. Isn't that an interesting spread? Telling a story that, for me at the time, I had to kill my ego completely and have a reckoning with myself, realize that I am not as virtuous as I thought before I could proceed down the path of the service to others, the lessons that the Three of Wands has to teach me here. Three of Wands reversed also indicates a lack of confidence. Because how can you have a confidence in yourself and in other people around you, but especially self-confidence when you yourself cannot trust yourself and you cannot trust yourself because you made a habit of lying to yourself, of <clears throat> cheating and stealing and being emotionally manipulative and corrupting. This is where the lack of self-confidence comes in from a constant need to manipulate the situation into your favor instead of allowing justice to play out properly as it would. <sighs> God. Gonna pause it here for a minute. You know, I've always liked colors. I've always liked bright colors, much to the dismay of my parents who thought that my paintings are not realistic enough. And I say... I'm really into surrealism and the crazy wild colors, they, uh, they're striking visually and they really do a thing, if you know what he, I mean by the thing. But this painting, oh yeah, buddy, it does a thing. The, there was a time where I saw this painting and the beams coming out from the inside of it, the guy's face here. All those green beams, green beams, sorry. All those green beams were swirling and moving around in every which direction. And I could actually see that the energy coming from the space kind of here was cascading in and out. And the guy himself, his face was like morphing and melting even more due to a very interesting state of mind at the time. But this painting, it really does a thing. It is extremely visually striking. Probably one of my favorite pieces that I've done so far. God, uh... Going back to kind of the spiritual aspect of it. Ego is centered in your third energy center. In your solar plexus chakra right here. 
typically yellow kind of light it indicates a very strong ego and there are good aspects to a strong ego being the strong drive the want to do things and get things done yes but it can be if it is not tempered with love then it is worthless because it will try to manipulate and do things without thinking about other people so what's happening in this painting as well the third eye is not typically green it is indigo the head structure of the energy body is not typical typically green is from blue to violet those kind of colors green is associated with the heart and what we're seeing here is an awakening of this uh melty face guy's heart chakra and energy shooting up through the spine and into his brain to help him melt away the negative aspects of the ego right there so ego by itself if it is not tempered by the heart center not tempered by love it is worthless it is manipulative it is almost criminal how bad it can be so the lesson that i got from this painting as well after i finished it is an awakening of the love center of the heart center and it's seeing the divine in other people and within myself as well that was the beginning of the dissolution of ego it also created in me a kind of a don't give a fuck attitude you know if you are wrong and i disagree with you i don't have a problem telling you and sometimes i will not even have a reasonable conversation with you because your ego is too strong to have a reasonable conversation sometimes other people's egos simply need to be put on the spot and corrected the right way and it hurts this kind of corrective action sometimes hurts the individual but that's because it the individual has identified so hard with the ego that I am attacking and hurting by the comments of truth. So how do you fight the ego? You fight the ego through truth and through justice. You take the justice card in reverse and you flip it upside down, rather right side up. Justice, she holds the sword in her right hand ready to take action and she holds the scales into left ready to receive equilibrium the ego can be dissolved when you are in equilibrium between the heart and the solar plexus as well there is only one law and that is the law of one and the law of one states that all is one those three words that's the ultimate law it means that you and i are the same divine infinite creator the same consciousness and when i see this in you i no longer have to hide that from myself i no longer have to hide myself from you and i don't need to especially hide myself from your ego so i will circumvent your ego at times go around its defenses and sneak through behind the ego in the reversal of the seven of sword cards i'll sneak behind your ego this time and i'll connect directly with your consciousness and if you could learn to do the same the world will become a much better place and sometimes you have to take a direct hit to the ego sometimes you need to strike someone's ego directly other times you could find the little holes in the already melting ego and touch reach your finger in and touch the consciousness that's inside of the person with whom you are speaking because that consciousness is made out of pure green energy pure love isn't that beautiful and when you could flip the seven of swords upside down and get caught stealing and i hope that you catch yourself stealing energy so that other people do not have to catch you stealing energy when you catch your ego stealing energy and you begin to melt it away by the power of the justice card by the power of the divine feminine creative energy in a way create a new life for yourself well that's when you can reverse and make up right the three of wands card is right now it turns indecision into action because you're no longer lying to yourself about who you are and you are no longer stealing energy from other people you are now grounded you understand that you do not have to steal energy you are energy you create energy so the action that you need to take 
with the Three of Wands card, the path you go is a path of the service to other self path. Find your truth. And not just your own personal truth. Find that truth. That all is one. Find that within yourself and you will be able to take action. Creatives, artists, musicians. Perhaps this is what's blocking you. Perhaps your ego is preventing you from going further in your creative endeavor. Perhaps your ego, the justice reversed, the negative aspects of Venus, the creativity... When you make that right side up, the creativity will flow more. Get rid of your ego, man, woman, whoever you are. You don't need your ego to move forward. The ego grounds you in this world, yes. But you will not be able to move to the next world if you are grounded in your ego. You must be grounded in your heart center and making your way up. Grounded from the middle, the middle outward path in many ways. So you can reverse the card, the three of wands. You can take action. There are no more delays because you're in flow state now. The creative energy is flowing freely through you because it doesn't have to flow through the layers of fleshy ego in the way. At first, it can make its way around it, and then it doesn't even have any obstacles in the way. The, flu, the full flow state is achieved once all of the flesh has been melted away. The sunglasses have, that were blinding your consciousness have dropped to the ground and you're ready to move forward. And on a macro scale, this is happening right now. All this chaos that we see in the world, all this insane ideology being pushed on us, and you know the stuff that I'm talking about. This has always been there. It always has. This insanity didn't appear out of nowhere overnight. It's just... We're taking off our blinders. The sunglasses that were blinding our consciousness, they're not working anymore, are they? And the sun is shining brighter and it's throwing more energy into our earth physically through the aurora. And metaphysically, it reveals the darkness. The dark is coming to light. Dark to light. Isn't that a thing that we all wish for? But... It also means that we're shining a light on the darkest aspects of the world and the darkest aspects of ourselves. A lot of people believe that the world is going to shit. It's falling apart. No such thing negative on that count. The world is improving so much more because we are able to see all the corruption and the bullshit. We can see it now and it angers us. It angers the ego more than anything. But when you understand things from the perspective that all is one, understand how these corruptive actions, the, the, the corruption kept us in the dark until we were ready to face the reality. And now we're at a time of facing the reality. And God, it is so hard. But it is so worth it because the world that comes on the other side that we live from the center of our heart, it is a beautiful new world. And yes, you have to melt your fleshy bits away but what is revealed is a crystalline pure energy body underneath that is so beautiful mesmerizing colors and the beauty of the world that is coming it's uh, ineffable and if you have seen dreams and visions of it maybe you should share these with other people and give them hope i'm not saying to spread hopium and intoxicate the people prevent them from working on themselves no you must work on yourself you must melt away the ego. But on the other side of this, personally and globally, it is such a beautiful experience. And let me tell you right now how stoked I am on life. Can I be happy? I want to share my happiness with you. Recently, I started eating carnivore again. I ate nothing but basically a full spectrum of amino acids. Life has been better since I've been battling with the ego and really battling my shadow. I did a mushroom trip not long ago. And the mushroom trip ended in the middle instead of in the end. And I heard the mushroom say that we have no more lessons for you. You have now integrated your shadow. Good God, that was such a good, beautiful moment. And I've been elated ever since. Been so happy. On the physical level... I'm feeding myself on a carnivore diet. I'm losing all of the buildup of fat, negative energy that is stored within me. It's melting away. 
like this. And the elation that I feel on the inside is amazing. And that comes not just from dropping weight and making it easy for my system to operate, lowering the uh, toxic load on my body. It is giving me the building blocks for brain chemicals, the tryptophan that converts to serotonin, and the phenylalanine that becomes dopamine. So suddenly my brain chemistry is more balanced. I'm just happy and stoked on life all the time. Yesterday at work, I teared up a little bit. Luckily out of sight of all the bros at work because they called me a little bitch. But I teared up just from the pure joy of living in this beautiful world at this time. The beautiful sights that I could see out of the window. And the beautiful life that I have right now. The, the beautiful partner who I have in my life. Just the beauty of everything. Despite not being fully come together life coming together and this happens when you face your shadow when you work on your ego and when you mold it and melt it away to to see the beauty inside everything when you take off your fucking blinders those sunglasses that are blocking the light of everything when you begin to walk through nature slowly and take the time to stop look around listen to the sounds Observe the tiniest little creatures doing their thing. God, amazing things happen. I've been telepathic with bugs and with birds since doing this. And no, I'm not tripping on balls right now or at the time. There have been moments where I would be checking out a bug and the bug would turn and look at me and check me out too. And we kind of say hi to each other. I had a bug high five me. A June bug. <laughs> Ever since stuff like that. But I'll save my bug stories for a different piece called Bugsies. Because that's a really cool one too. You're going to love it. In the meantime, what can we take away from this? Dark, difficult set of cards. Hard lessons learned on a voyage. I have integrated the lessons of Melty Face, Eagle Death, Seven of Swords, Justice, and the Three of Wands. And I encourage you to do the same. Look at yourself in a mirror. Do mushrooms if you have to. And let them guide you towards dissolving your ego. My name is Jaeger. I'm a visual artist. If you found this helpful and valuable to you, show your appreciation. Interact with my channel. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends if this message got to you. And as always, wishing you blessings. May the blinders be removed off your eyes. May you see yourself for the beautiful being who you really are. And take this beauty and share it with the world. You are beautiful. You are an infinite creator, a being of light. Look in the mirror. And see the beauty of yourself instead of all your failings of the ego. Stop identifying with your failings. And identify with the very essence of consciousness of who you are. And find that consciousness not just within yourself, but with everyone else. Thank you for listening today. This is Melty Face. 3 by 3 feet, fluorescent and phosphorescent acrylic on canvas. God, cool piece. The true beginning of my journey as a visual artist. All right. Have a good one. Ciao.